We do it just on a daily basis. All right. But well, what I want to do is something a little different today. I'm going to I'm going to preach the sermon in reverse uh, because I think sometimes we focus so much on uh, sin. You know, uh, and there's different versions of how we do that. It's not that sometimes people just beat you up over what you've done wrong. The other side of it is when we, we, we so placate it and we speak so much about sin, we never talk about the solution. So what I'm going to do is give you the solution first. And then we're going to talk about wrath, right? How regardless of whatever sin you're dealing with in your life that is set up in your life, that God has given you victory over it. Isn't that wonderful? And so we're going we're to do it that way. All right, so let's first talk about this. You know, uh, we get lost in the idea that God is angry at us when we sin or is vengeful concerning sin, as if God is stumping around heaven, and every time you blow it, he goes, right, boy, I tell you, you got one more time to do that. I'm going to come down there. All right, we feel like God's angry about sin, and, and, uh, or, 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 or we think that, that God is always on edge to send judgment about sin. And this is because we've lost sight of the gospel. We, we have not connected the dots. Now, I'm going to have some fun with you guys because I have more time now than I had at the other service. So we're going to have a little bit of fun, right? Sometimes we can get all of the elements of a thing correct in pronounce, saying it right, but we just don't get it. Do you remember years ago, uh, I think it was Sesame Street or one of those, and they would teach kids how to sound out words. So they would put a beat to it like this. Pla, A. There you go. Okay. Like now, when they talk, they don't go, I want to go outside to pla, A, play. They say, I want to go outside to play. The, 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 the point of getting the pieces right is so you can pronounce it right. So I think sometimes with the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have the pieces right, but we don't ever put the pieces together. So this thing about sin this God has provided a solution for sin when he sent his son to die for sin. Jesus didn't come to, com to comfort you in sin. He didn't come to teach you how to compromise in sin. He didn't come to say it's cool when you sin. He, he came to deliver you from sin Be because we need to be delivered from sin. It's destructive to our lives. It's, it, it, and so he came to deliver us from sin, he solved the issue when he sent his son. He sent Jesus, the Lamb of God. Okay, we're gonna do play. Uh, play. Uh, the Lamb of God who takes a talk to me, who takes away the sin of the world. And so, when he sent his son Jesus, he made a way to separate sin from man, so man could have access to him, and he has access to man. This is the gospel. The gospel is the good news concerning what God has done for us through Christ. That's the good news. And we, we don't understand it. So either we go to one side or the other. Either, either we're so sin conscious until we're like, I'm just going, you know, uh, uh, you know, in our church, everything was a sin. Like in the, I grew up in a church where wearing pants was a sin. Like half of y'all going straight to hell. <laughs> right? So now, now this, is how the, this is how the soul works. Every time you tell me what not to do, the thing you tell me not to do is, is, is what's left dominant in your soul. So if you say, don't cuss, don't cuss. All your soul here is cuss, 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 cuss. Because <laughs> that's, that's how broken man functions. So the Old Testament was written in thou shalt not to show you what sin was. The New Testament is written in the affirmative. So he doesn't tell you what not to do. He just tells you what to do. Speak words of edification one to another. Because if you're speaking words of edification one to another, you're not calling me a mother father. <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You know, WTF when you're typing for those, who, those of us who are sanctified. Glory to God. WTF means Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Okay, this is going to be one of those. God solved the sin issue. He's not stomping around heaven when we sin. However, he is desiring that all of his children hear and receive the solution. So you can have victory. So we're going to start talking about wrath today. I don't care whatever it is. You need to know that God gives you victory over sin. 
that if I'm, if I'm, and I'm not, but if I was a white, a, a hate white people thing, and that sin of hatred inside of me, please don't tell people they're always going to be sinners like that. Because it confuses them. That means I'm going to always be hating white people. I'm just going to come to church and now and just suppress my hatred for white people. Oh, God's going to take that out of you, man. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. So whatever I came as, you can come as you are, but nobody stays as they are. Because he transforms us. He died for our sin and for our sins. A sin is a disposition that puts ourselves in the center of things and says, in effect, I want to live independent of God. And the behaviors that come out of that position become our sins. Christ came to die and save us from both of those, uh, that, both of those scenarios because if, if, if in God there's life and there's, no, there, there's nothing, the only life that there is is in God, if you're outside of that life, the result is simply death. So the wages of sin is, but the gift of God is eternal life. There you go. See, plus, hey, play, you got it. So you connect the dots. So now let's talk about wrath. Oh, man. I think Chip knows my business. That's why he assigns me these, these sermons that walk down where I used to live. I used to live on Wrath Avenue. <laughs> I used to live on, I, 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 I used to live on, I wish the sucker would Avenue. <laughs> you, talking about? you got one more time. You boy, don't let this black robe fool you. God save me from something. I'll take this robe off and beat you with it. Man, don't, I was that dude. I was angry. So what is wrath? Wrath. What is wrath? Uh, I won't go into all of the Greek of it, but this is with the definition. It's defined as settled anger. Opposition rising from an ongoing fixed opposition. It proceeds from an internal disposition which steadfastly opposes someone or something based on extended personal exposure, i.e. solidifying what the beholder considers to be wrong. In other words, when you did something or something happened, it made me angry. I focus on that and I don't check the anger and the anger settles. It settles inside of me. So now I'm focused on it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Mr. Youth Leader, there you go. There you go. Right? And, if, and watch this. You know you're there because you start doing self-talk when they ain't there. There you go. See, the problem with bro man is he think he whatever, whatever, whatever. And such 5th and 13th and the 17th to the 29th. And when you say, what's up, bro? Huh, yeah. But in your heart, you're like, yeah, whatever. Because I'm not the only one. So don't look at me in that tone of voice. Who do that? It's, it's settled anger. It's settled anger, right? And so the more, once it settles, it, it, it has its little buddies. You know, wrath has partners. The partners of wrath we see uh, over in Ephesians 4 and 31, it has partners. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. All of these guys run together like a gang. They're like, you know, they're like the boys on, on the block. These guys run together. So if there's, if there's anger there if that's unchecked, it becomes wrath, and then it becomes bitterness, clamor, evil speaking is slander. It's what you say about a person normally behind their back. So all of these run together. He says, put it away from you. So what's the path to wrath? Now, the path to wrath comes from our text, and... Um, I won't dig too far into it, but this is a good story to read about Esau and Jacob. It, it, the, the bitterness was there so tough, uh, Esau said, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to kill him. I'm going to kill him, like dead, like kill him dead. I'm gonna, I don't know where can you kill somebody but dead. I'm going to kill him dead. <laughs> right? And, and it's so bad about it, the whole situation that fell out, was their mama was complicit in it. Y'all got to read the story. You know, so she like, okay, boy, okay, your daddy about to give out the blessing. He's he getting old, so I want you to go in there and do that old switcheroo thing on him, and I want you to take the blessing. So when all came out, Esau 
was about to kill, you know, get out to kill his brother, right? That's their story. Now watch this. What's our story? See, we're going to get off of them real fast. But what's my story? What, what happens normally in us and the way we get to wrath is that something happened. Someone hurt you. Someone practices negligence or abuse. Something hurt you. And the result, hurt run, turns into anger fast. Hurt turns into anger real fast. Because if, if I hurt myself, I don't get too angry. Like, I, like if I'm walking down, and I, I just did this in February, so don't y'all laugh at me. Hear me? Promise. If I'm walking down the steps and I miss a step and I fall down the steps, I, don't, I just turn around and look at the step. <laughs> As if the step did something because somebody did something. I'm not going to blame myself right away. But that type of anger goes away quick because you realize it was just me. But if you go through life and something happens and someone does something, a, a divorce happens, a, a child does something, a, a whatever, and it makes you angry, it, the hurt turns to anger fast. And then, and if I don't check the anger, the anger begins to get wings. It has wings. And it begins to get these other guys in. And it settles, and we end up in this place where we're walking in wrath. The th funny thing about wrath, I used to think wrath was always expressed. The, the, the fact of the matter is, it, wrath is very quiet. It's, it's like... <laughs> I said this in the last sermon. I don't write this stuff down. It just kind of comes up. Wrath is like the crock pot for, for anger. It's like, it's like a crock pot on low. So anger in there just, just low and slow. There you go. The, the, the term a wrath is actually means swelling. It's like a hot air balloon. It don't just go, no, it go, and you're getting bigger and bigger. And after a while, you all, you, you like one second away. See, so how do you, so you're in wrath. You don't realize you're there. Sometimes it's there. You don't realize you're there. So I'm going to give you some ways to know. How do you know when you're there? How do you know when you're there? <laughs> this is fun. Painful, but fun. Self-talk. When, I, when I'm dealing with the sin of wrath, how do I know? Listen to what, you listen to what you're talking to yourself about. You ever been arguing that somebody is not there? You ever been driving down the street and you mad about what just happened? I tell you what, I tell you what, that mother father, I said mother father, that, that mother father, that mother father, sister brother has one more time to do this to me. I swear for the God that I serve and live, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to cut him and blame him for bleeding. I tell you I'm mad right now. And you just talking? Ain't nobody in the room. It's just going on and on and on and on. You mean there's something there's something gonna tell me? There's something gonna tell me who they think you is. You talking about me? Tell you what? You got one more time. <laughs> yeah, make you look nutty. Have you ever done that? You sitting in the car and somebody pull up looking at you, and you play it off like you're talking on the phone. Yes, and uh, the other. <laughs> Oh, it's not just me. It's not just me. I swear. You guys do it too. Watch this. How do you know you're there? How do you know you're in wrath? Monitor your internal responses when you come into the presence of a person or situation or someone mentions it. You will feel it well up in your, down here. Yeah. There she go. There they go. In here. Quiet. What you say about the person or situation privately. That's when you get your friend. Man, don't tell nobody. <laughs> I like this one. I ain't trying to say nothing, but. Well, yes, you are. I mean, you ain't trying to say that. If you, I ain't saying nothing, but this is what I'm saying. There you go. And it's always negative. It becomes this evil speaking. Uh, clamor it becomes all of that. And finally, this is the one I used to hate because it makes you feel stupid. Unplanned outbursts. Oh my God, did I say that? Did I do that? Oh Lord. When I was growing up, my sister used to just wail on me. She used to just beat me up. Now for years, I, I, I was able to beat her up because you know, in, in families, you know, particularly the boy, the young boy, the youngest turned into a big dude after a while. And I was pretty strong, pretty athletic. And my sister was just putting it on me 
And so she scratched me. I still got the mark. That's how deep she scratched me. She hit the white meat. <laughs> I'm gonna find y'all. Y'all in here. You gonna find y'all. <laughs> so I'm bleeding. And she says, hey, you're not gonna do nothing. You're not gonna do nothing. Oh, she's watching. She's in town from Toledo. You're not gonna do nothing. Because that's what you always do. So I turned into the Hulk, man. I started, I started super saying up, man. Ooh, oh, there he go, there he go. He ain't gonna do nothing but cry. Ooh, and I was swole all up. And I reared back Pastor Chip, and I'm coming in for a knockout, knock her out, knock her out. And at the same time, I saw my dad in, the, in my mind, like, kill the boy for hitting his sister. I saw all of that at the same time. And at the same last moment, I pulled the punch, and I threw a forearm instead, and I hit her on her shoulder. And she flew across the kitchen, and she slid on her behind. That was bubbling in me for years. One day, I'm going to knock her out. See, that's how wrath works. It comes out, like, and then you can't believe you did it. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Don't be laughing. Be laughing. <laughs> Y'all play too much. What kind of churches is people laugh at the preacher? What kind of place is One of the most challenging parts about dealing with wrath is oftentimes what you're angry about, you're justified in being angry about it because it was in fact wrong, right? What's said or done was wrong. And so to see the person continue to do the thing and then act like they didn't do the thing, every time you see it, you begin mad all over again, right? So, but however justified our feelings may be, we have to understand why it's sinful. It's sinful first because it's the opposite of what God told us to do in those situations. It misses the mark. Sin means to miss the mark. It misses the mark of what God has for you. And God, anytime God tells you not to do something, he's trying to preserve you because it's destructive. To walk around with this boiling inside of you all the time, and walking around in unforgiveness, wrath, anger, bitterness. You know, someone said unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Oh, I get you. Aha. Well, they go on about their business. This thing is eating you alive. God knows that. It is sinful because it misses the mark of what God has for us. Here's the good news. The good news is you can be set free from it. Now, you may wonder, what happened to that wrathful, angry dude? He's still around. I said this in the first service, too. None of this stuff is written down. Your old man, your old nature, the one that died when you met Jesus, he kind of like Jesus. He, he mimics Jesus. You kill him on the day, three days later, the old man is getting up out the grave. About to cut somebody out again. Go, no, 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 you stay dead. You, you can stay dead. So you have to understand that. To be set free from sin or any, and in this case, wrath, freedom from wrath or any sin does not mean you will never feel it or even choose it. You may decide to go off. You used to say it. Oh, don't make me go there. You don't want this. You don't want none of this smoke. Like, you know you're about to go. <laughs> you know, you, you see, we got to talk. I, I can tell me and you at the wall right after service. Could tell, because I'm feeling him. So, okay, me and you at the wall. You may even choose it, knowing that it's wrong. Because that's the sin part of us. That's the old man, right? But freedom means that wrath or sin no longer has the ability to rule you. So it can't just come on you like a robber and say, slap him and I don't care with nobody who's your butt. It can't do that no more. Now, you have to know that. So whatever you're dealing with, know that God has given you victory over sin. Now, I'm not just making this up. Let's see what the word says in Romans 6 and 11. The verse above it says, like Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even though we should walk in this light. Likewise, reckon ye yourselves to be what? Dead indeed to sin, but alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, don't let it reign in your mortal body. 
Just like you can say yes to it, you can say no. No. No, I'm going to slap. I ain't slapping the taste out of nobody's mouth. Stop even talking. Stop building yourself up to stay broken. No, nope, that's not the way God has a better plan for me and my soul. You listen, when you walk around in wrath and anger like that, you 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 you're letting people pay letting people live in your soul without paying no rent. You, man, I'm evicting you. You got to go. I'm not the big big bad black dude that going to slap the taste out your mouth unless you make me. But other than that, we good. Just want to throw that in there because some of y'all are getting out of pocket. All right, watch this. <laughs> for sin shall not dominate you, have dominion over you, for you're not under the law but under grace. So, so if you're dealing with this thing, and uh, I'm kidding about it, but it's really not funny, because this bitterness inside of you, this wrath inside of you will destroy you. It, it, it's so destructive, even in our text, it says uh, bitterness a uh, so root of bitterness springing up uh, causes trouble, and 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 uh, it defiles. Year, years ago, when I was at the University of Cincinnati, I loved lemonade. I still love lemonade. It's my favorite drink. If you love me, buy me some simply lemonade. That's if you have love for Pastor Fur. Whenever you want to love on Pastor Fur, buy me some simply lemonade. Any one of them will be fine. But I love lemonade. And so I'm sitting here drinking, and every time I turn around, my friends would put salt in my lemonade. First time I tasted it, I didn't realize it because I was so busy eating my hamburger that I didn't realize there was something fishy about my lemonade. Every time I turn around, they put a little bit more salt, a little bit more salt, a little bit more salt. And finally, it became evident to me that there was some bitter in my sweet. This is what wrath does. It puts bitter in your sweet. You're good until we talk about that. Everything's cool till you mention him. Everything's cool till you talk about that situation. I mean, sometimes our, our, our wrath is, is, is unfounded. We mad about stuff we don't know about. Those darn people at the border, you don't know none of them. I don't even know why you're tripping. You just, you're just tripping. Somebody gave you that. Somebody sold you that and you bought it. You need to return the sender. Mm, glory. Return that right back to sender. You mad about folk you don't know nothing about. I won't get on that. That's another sermon. But God is able. Sin will not have dominion over you. So it's not going to control you. No, we're not doing that. Watch this. So what's the steps, if it were? Practical repentance. I love repentance. This is a word that we don't even hear in church no more. Last time you heard repent. We don't hear that. You preach no repent to me. I'm good. No, you're not good. We're not good. Repent. And it's found in this particular verse, which is Ephesians 4 and 21, is, is a wonderful practical way to understand what repentance actually is. Now, I come from, from a very expressive church. So in the church I grew up in, everything is loud and with emotion. Like, you can't just quietly repent. Like, you guys, some of y'all like the frozen chosen. I don't know what God doing, but I knew God chose you. So, you know, it's, it's, it's quiet. So, repent is quiet. But in not my church, repent was loud. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord. Jesus, help me today. Be down there at the altar. Cry out to God. They make you holler. Say it. Say his name. What's his name? What's his name? Say his name. Say it again. Say it faster. Come on now. Say it. What you doing? Call on him. Call on him. You ain't calling him. Call on him. I mean, that's the church I grew up in. It was like, man, you scared. You, you, you might get jacked up if you don't. You okay, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> they may hitting you, talking about you ain't, you don't love him. You don't love him. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Can you tell I was abused? Okay, it's, it's abuse. Church abuse. <laughs> Help me, wait a minute, give me a second. <laughs> Oh, Lord. So, but you can do all that external stuff and never repent. Repent means to turn away from. It's, it's a change of direction that was preceded by a change of heart or mind. And so now that you hear that God can give you victory, change your mind about this thing. And don't buy into the wrath narrative anymore for your life. Don't buy into the bitterness. Don't buy into once broken, always broken. Just because it happened don't mean it have to keep on happening. Because if you don't deal with it, what happened keeps on happening. You're replaying it. And every time you replay it, it hurts you. 
You don't have to. What's the solution? Turn from it. If indeed you've heard him, have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, that ain't me, not anymore. So put off, which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust, and second part, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Change the way you think about it. Let God show you a different way. Because you realize, if somebody need to get God, God gonna get them. If they don't need to get God, God ain't gonna get them. Be careful, because you may need to get God. I remember one time I was praying this prayer with my little pompous behind, because you know, when you come from churches like I come from, it just breeds self-righteousness. It does. I'm praying for our marriage. I told Beverly, no, get down on your knees and pray. We gonna pray right now. We gonna get this fixed right now, woman. Oh, I was stupid. Help me, Jesus. So I'm praying. I'm praying, oh, Pastor Chip, I'm praying up and laughing. I'm getting it. And God, come down. Even, even we had hoop when we prayed. Even at home, and God, come down. <laughs> you know what we're going through, Jesus. <laughs> come down and bless this house, God, and let her know <laughs> that she wrong <laughs> in everything, <laughs> everything. That's right, right in this marriage. I fix it, Jesus. I, oh. <laughs> the whole nine. I know how to do that stuff. I know. I know. I know how to do this. I, I, I know you do. <laughs> so I made this little phrase, you know, whatever you need to do, God. And so the Lord, the Holy Spirit whispered to me. He said, now you do understand. Since you all are one, whatever I do to her, I got to do to you. Let me change this prayer. <laughs> I wouldn't lie. Lord, let your sweet wind blow over us. <laughs> Help us to know and just see your way and walk in it. Lord, be merciful and tender towards us. Jeez, I'm going to show y'all why in a second. Because we forgive because we all need to be forgiven. And, and as much as I may be bitter with someone, someone may be bitter with me. God forgives us both. So he moves you to a new place of thinking about the situation. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, evil speaking be put it away with all malice. Be kind, tenderhearted, Forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. The basis of me offering pardon and getting it out is by releasing it to God. It's because I've been forgiven. I need forgiveness. And listen, you ever had somebody mad at you about something they thought you did and you didn't do? Do you know they still mad though? They still mad at you. And you know they bitter about it because every time you talk to them, how you doing? She's just gonna come in here talking to me like ain't nothing ever happened. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, now you don't know what you're talking nah, about. Okay, 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 uh-huh. Talk to the hand, because the hand don't understand. Yeah, they mad at you. They're mad over something they think happened, didn't happen, but they still angry, they still have bitterness. So God says, let me show you what we're gonna do. I want you to embrace my way of life and trust that if any need for vengeance is even present, I'll do that. But you don't worry yourself with it. It's your opportunity to get free from this. Forget it. Listen, let it go and receive the freedom that God has for you. Let it go and trust God. I used to teach a seminar. It was a powerful seminar. I think I might start doing those again. Uh, it's called Conflict Resolution for Believers. I had them for three hours. And we talked about how to release things that forgiveness is a release of the issue to God releasing the pain to God right and extending pardon as God has pardoned and it's just it's not a feeling it's an action forgiveness is not a feeling if you wait to feel it you ain't gonna never forgive nobody but it's an action and say father I trust you I embrace your way of life I acknowledge that this is happening inside of me 
and I want it done. See, I had to pray that prayer. So I stopped throwing furniture across the room and punching walls, you know. <laughs> One time I punched the wall. We was in a rental house. I'll show you how stupid I am. You punching the wall. It's an old raggedy house already. So it's plaster wall. And so your big old fist is went through the wall. So I put a picture over it so nobody know I punched the wall. <laughs> Y'all stop laughing at me. I'm beginning to feel really offended by that. I'm hurt. Now I'm angry. There's wrath. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so my son, Stephen, is, uh, he still is. He's a, kind of the super brainy legal dude. Stephen, uh, some, some friends came over, some company came over, and Stephen started preaching. Little dude, about four. My daddy's strong. I said, yes, son. Okay. Yeah, my daddy's strong. He's strong. My daddy's strong. He punched a hole in the wall. <laughs> and right behind this picture, right here, right here, that was one of the things that helped me turn around. And I realized I'm not only taking myself down, I'm taking my kids down. It's time to be free. See, stop just, see sin make you justify yourself. Well, that's just the way I am. That's the way I was raised. Mom ain't raised no fool. Da, 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 da. That's a, that's a, that narrative, that died with the old man. Put on a new man, which is created in righteousness and true holiness. Put on a new man. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. I don't have to walk around mad and angry and bitter and frustrated all the time. It's horrible. It leads to high blood pressure and fat people like me. You get to be compulsive eating. You're trying to feel something that's empty on the inside. You don't know what that is. It's deep down bit bitterness and anger all down in your soul. And it's just coming out in all kinds of ways and destroying you. And here's the good news. God. But God is able to set us free. All I have to do is acknowledge it, repent, turn from that, and turn to a new way. Because if you're a child of God, Jesus came to give you the ability to say no to sin. He'll give you the power, but, he, but it has to be a choice on your part. You've got to say no to this thing. Say amen, somebody. Say it, say it better than that. Amen. Don't make me come out there. All right, hold on. Give me, what's my last side? What is it? Trust God. I'm not giving, I ain't going to do that one. Go to the next one. It's your time. There you go. That's, hey, that's the, that's the closer right there. Your time to be free. You acknowledge what's happening inside of you. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means you're a person. It doesn't mean you, you're horrible. You're human. And it gets, it, it's, like, it's like crazy glue. I was stupid with crazy glue because I didn't believe it. Bonds instantly. I know it don't. Watch me. I'm playing with it. Don't buy. Oh, my God. I can't. Oh, Lord. It does bond instantly. I felt so stupid. Brother, like, what you doing? Nothing? <laughs> stuck my fingers together. That's how sin is. You, you think it can't be you. You can't be stuck. But we all can be stuck. We have a proclivity to get stuck. So thank God for a Savior named Jesus. And when you just embrace what he's done for you, just say yes. God, yes to your will. Yes to your way. I'm letting this go and I'm breaking out. I'm going to be free from this thing. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen.